Okay. Um, so, um, so as we start to talk about work, which is defined, and even the definition of the mathematical definition of work requires this content. We can no longer avoid talking about it. Work is defined as the force, as a vector, product with another vector. And the kind of the product this is, it's called the dot product or inner product or scalar product in one of the more confusing names of the product. Um, and this is a new kind of mathematical operation that you have seen in chapter two, but when you saw it in chapter two, that could have been the first time you saw it, unless you remember it from your pre-calculus or something. <laughs> so this uh, new mathematical operation, it takes time getting used to, and it does, um, it, all, it deserves a full lecture on it. And for a couple semesters of doing online lecture, we didn't have the full lecture on it. We do. This 30 minute thing is that full lecture that uh, I wanted to have and do have now. Sorry, one second. And so, um, so as you're going through this UX material, do please take a look at it. Um, you know, if 30 minutes is a lot of time, you can always watch it at double the speed. When I review my own videos, that's how I do it. So it takes only 15 minutes for me to watch through it. Um, so, so you do have that full lecture on that product and it'll talk about all the properties of that product and different definitions, the physics definition versus the math definition and all that. So, um, so for the remainder of the thing that we are going to do in the next uh, 30 minutes, uh, I'm kind of starting from a place where you have seen this. So you know the two different ways of calculating that product, either using the physics definition or the using the component definition, the math definition of that product. And, and, I, I, and I want you to do a couple calculation exercise. Um, it's the kind of thing that we normally do with uh, like group work and worksheet and in-person lecture, but um, uh, in the online group work is uh, kind of hard to organize. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, in terms of our in-person lab time, we are just using it for a lab. <laughs> so um, what I thought I would do is I have this old worksheet that's posted here because I figured, hey, I have it. And even though it's super old, uh, why not make it available if I already have it? And I thought I might just uh, um, do a few uh, questions that go directly to just uh, that product practice. And this is one of those things where the best way to do it is uh, for you to do it yourself, uh, for you to get the exercise. Uh, that would be the ideal. It's just that in the online optional attendance meeting, it, that's a little hard to manage. So I'll just uh, go through that. <laughs> but I guess what I recommend for those of you who are watching the recorded video is to, you know, uh, with each question, just to pause for a bit, do it yourself, and uh, compare your answer to mine. So this is the worksheet. It starts out with some bit of uh, intro. I'm just going to skip over that. You're welcome to read through it, work changing energy and all that. So what I wanted to look at was basically um, questions one, two, that's the math um, uh, review, and maybe question three, if there's time, yeah, and leaving the rest. So, so yeah, uh, let me see if I, I don't like the balance here. Um, okay, maybe that's better, more readable. So yeah, uh, the problem one here, it says, um, Oh, A. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to do A because I did that on lecture. So watch the lecture. The 30 minute lecture does that. <laughs> and uh, oh, part B. I don't think I've talked about this. So um, yeah, two other equivalent ways to restate. So this is how that works out. It's kind of interesting. Um, yeah, so yeah, say that that. Um, so let me just uh, illustrate with a drawing of those um, two vectors. Let's say I have a vector A and vector B. And for the physics definition, I need to have an angle theta between them. So the physics definition of that product is A dot B 
is the magnitude of the two vectors, A and B, or the product of them, times cosine of the angle theta. And this statement is claiming that this is equal to A times the parallel component of B, uh, meaning, so let me drop down a perpendicular line segment from uh, B to A. So the perpendicular line segment would look something like this. So the parallel component of B would be something like this. Uh, this is my B parallel. So uh, to work this out, A times B parallel, I need to know the size of B parallel. Uh, for that, I need a right triangle, which uh, I've already drawn most of. This is my right triangle. This is my hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse is the magnitude of B, and this is the adjacent side, which means the, the magnitude of this should be the hypotenuse times cosine of theta from, you know, ka. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, do a little bit of algebra to solve for the adjacent. This is it. So, um, so if I work out what is a magnitude times the B parallel, that would be A times B cosine theta. And what do you know? This is equal to that. Um, so that's one. That's one question that they're asking. The second part is show that it's equal to this other thing, A parallel times B. So I have to do the same thing except with the other vector. Okay, um, so here's my A vector. I need to draw a segment perpendicular to B. So let me drop down the segment perpendicular. Okay, so the parallel component of A would be this component here. Uh, you know, this added to this perpendicular component gives me A back. Um, so okay, same thing. I need to um, figure out can I get a different colored highlighter? Okay, yeah. So I need to figure out uh, this magnitude here. So I'm considering this right triangle. Hypotenuse is A, again. <laughs> and uh, this is the adjacent side of the angle, again. So the magnitude for this uh, should be a cosine theta for the same mathematical reasons. So when I calculate A parallel times B, that's A cosine theta times b. And because multiple scalar, multiple, multiplication by scalar factors commute, uh, I can just move cosine. It's a b cosine theta, which is equal to that. So, yeah. so, so yeah, and in fact, this is one of the ways we give meaning to, um, to the, to the that product that, um, that, that yeah, and, and this, is part, this particular description is useful when we are describing work, because it, when we are trying to describe work in English words, we don't really say, oh, work is a force times displacement times cosine theta. What is theta? <laughs> we don't say that. What, we would, is, what I prefer to instead say is a force times the component of displacement the parallel to force, or you can actually swap it around. Uh, displacement times component of force parallel to displacement. And uh, they will give you the same mathematical quantity. So, so yeah, that's, um, that's it. That's that 1B. Oh, I, I don't know why I've never lectured on it. So we have like five minutes. I think that's enough to do some numerical exercise. Um, so A, B, C are the figures 1, 2, 3 there. Uh, so let me do those first, and then, oh, I think that's what I usually do as in the group work and presentation. And I'll try to do those quickly enough so that there's time left for D and E, where I think we are given components. <laughs> uh, so, okay, so this is the, this kind of setup is where it's, uh, um, yeah, so let me do figures one and two first, and then I'll make room for three later. Um, this kind of setup is where the physics de definition is really better, easier, because it doesn't require you to um, define any axis. So the physics definition of that product is simply 
that the dot product is the product of the magnitudes of the two vectors times cosine of the angle between them. So um, here I am given the magnitude of vectors. So and I am given the angle between them. So a dot b is simply okay. 5 times 5 times cosine of 60 degrees. Oh, I think I know cosine of 60 degrees. That's one half. So this will be 12.5. Don't even need a calculator. Um, so yeah, that's that product. And uh, I don't know what more to say there is. So uh, figure two, we are con being con um, they are continuing to give us the magnitude of vectors and the angle between them. So we can still continue to use this definition. So C dot D is equal to 5 times 3 times cosine of 120 degrees. Now, if this obtuse angle gives you a pause, I will tell you that your calculator knows how to handle it. And you can just put this into calculator. Um, you don't have to do any processing of your own. 5 times 3 times 120, I mean degree mode. Uh, cosine of that. And see how this has a negative sign? That is built into the definition of cosine in calculators. Um, I think this is supposed to be covered in, um, let me just finish writing this down, minus 7.5. Uh, I think this is supposed to be covered in trigonometry or maybe even geometry. I think it's been covered in geometry alongside the unit circle because we start out with the definition of sine and cosine and tangent theta that starts with the Soka Toa. But once we introduce the unit circle, then we expand what sine and cosine mean. Sine is the, the y component of the unit circle at some angle, and cosine is the x component of the unit circle uh, at some angle theta. And theta can be basically any value. It can go from zero to infinity. It wraps after 360 degrees. Um, so, so your calculator knows how to handle that. So when you put in cosine of 120 degrees, it'll handle those, uh, basically the fact that this is going in the negative direction, it handles that. Uh, you don't have to worry about that. The times when you do have to worry about it is when you're dealing with the, the inverse trig functions. You have to understand what over what uh, range the inverse trig functions are defined. So cosine uh, is defined from 0 to 180 degrees. So if I put in something like minus, zero, oops, uh, minus 0 0.5 and put that through inverse cosine, it will give me 120 degrees. Um, but if this had been like, uh, I don't know, 240 degrees, so um, cosine of 240, is minus 0 0.5, that's the x component on the unit circle. But if you try to do inverse of that, you won't get 240 back because of the limitation on the range of the cosine, uh, inverse cosine function. So that's true. And this minus sign, it's meaningful. It, so if this had been displacement and force, this force is doing negative work because the component of that force that's parallel to C, it's going in the opposite direction. This minus sign is actually meaningful. Okay, let's uh, wrap up with the uh, figure three. And we might go a little bit over time, but uh, let me just wrap up. So with the figure three, this is all rotated around, but for the purpose of this definition, um, we don't care if it's rotated around because we don't even have to define our coordinate axis. So this is gonna be E dot f and we are given the magnitudes 4 times 4 and we are given the angle between cosine of oh, 90 degrees that's zero so it's zero <laughs> um, so when so in terms of work uh, when displacement and force are perpendicular the force does not work and uh, for dne they had um, components so dne gives you the scenario where uh, these are the limited set of circumstances where even I would say use the math definition because um, they already gave you the component information. So it seems silly uh, to go back, work out the magnitudes, work out, the, um, uh, work out the, their angle between them. And 
that's silly. Just to use the math definition. So the math definition of the product is that A dot B. You can just, uh, um, oh, I can do the compact notation. I goes from X, Y, Z, and it's A, I times B, I. Add up, uh, you know, multiply them by the same components and then add them up. That's what you're going to do. So for um, the uh, V A dot V B, so I'm just going to write this out, X component. Okay, I have two, and I'll handle meter per second, meter squared per second squared later. Two times minus three, that's the X component, a Y. So plus uh, three times two. Hmm. If you're going to add up to zero, um, yeah, and so all, there's a tactone unit of meter squared per second squared, but uh, this is minus six, this is six, so they add up to zero. And uh, one could ask the question, what does this mean? Uh, it means that uh, VA and VB are perpendicular. Because if you think back to the physics definition, uh, physics definition would have said it's their magnitudes times cosine of theta. Their magnitudes were not zero, but this, for this whole product to be equal to zero, this must have been zero. And for that to be zero, theta would have been 90 degrees, 180, wait, not 180. Um, <laughs> just, sorry, doing lazy. And, uh, it's two, two 70 degrees, and then you, uh, uh, addition of 360 over this. So, um, so that's what it means. And if you diagram this, you can figure out which of these, or I guess they are identical. It's a matter of which of the two uh, angles you count. So, so yeah, that's a D. Um, and by the way, uh, just <laughs> one final thing. Um, so this is one of the ways uh, people sometimes define angle, especially in contexts where the physical angle is needs to visualize. Like if you're dealing with a linear vector space that's multidimensional beyond the three, then the way you could define angle in that vector space is by using, so you can always use this to calculate that product um, using components. Once you have calculated that product, then you can relate to this and use the cosine theta that you get to define the angle, the abstract angle between two abstract vector quantities. So uh, that to wrap up with the E. Um, so E we have, you know, I don't think I need to do anything here. Because uh, one only has Y component, the other only has X component. So when I try to use this definition, both of those products will be zero because uh, the X component of F is zero times that, zero. Uh, y component of displacement is zero times that, zero. So it's, uh, this is zero. So that's it. So, um, so yeah, that's uh, I think uh, everything we have time to cover. So, um, so again, uh, we kind of skipped out on that product uh, when we were covering them in chapter two, when the textbook was covering it in chapter two. If necessary, please go back and take a look. Um, do take a look at my lectures. I hope they are uh, explained some of the things that may have been confusing. And, um, and the main utility of that product at this point is in uh, figuring out work. And the utility of work will be in figuring out the change of energy. So, um, so for most of the scenarios we will look at, it, the the force will either be parallel to the displacement or anti-parallel. Uh, but don't let that simplification uh, let you slack out on actually learning the how to compute work for more less common scenarios. Sometimes you know you. Well, yeah, zero, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, they are the most common angles you will see in the uh, actual dynamics questions you will see. But make sure you can do in between in case you need to.